Hi guys, welcome to lesson 10 for solving radical equations. So up until now we've been dealing with just radicals all by themselves, now we're throwing an equal sign in there. So our objective for the day is to simplify radicals involving products and quotients. So we're going to start off problem number one is solving by isolating the radical. And a radical equation is an equation that has a variable in the radicand. So the radicand, we remember, is the little square root symbol. So if we're, we have a variable underneath that, we call that a radical equation. So how do we get the square root of x by itself? We're going to think, we could even think of that like we have in the past of getting a variable by itself. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. So we have the square root of x is equal to 3. And in order to solve that, we need to square both sides of our equation. Because squaring something is the opposite of taking the square root. So we find that x is equal to 9. And that's your final answer. All right. Letter B, we've got the square root of x plus 11 is equal to uh, 21. So we subtract 11 from both sides, and the square root of x is equal to 10. Square it, and x is equal to 100. Okay, let's make sure we go step by step. All right, letter C, we have more than one operation going on underneath the radical, but we're still going to follow the same process. Subtract 7 from both sides. And the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 3. Now we're going to square both sides of our equation. Our radical sign cancels out, so we're left with x plus 1 is equal to 9. So subtract 1, and x equals 8. So not all that different from what we did during first semester. Uh, we just have a little bit of a, a wrinkle into it now. All right, so x, the square root of x minus 3 minus 3 is equal to 9. We add 3 to both sides of the equation. And x minus 3, square root of x minus 3 is equal to 12. We square both sides. x minus 3 is equal to 144. Add 3 to both sides, and x is equal to 147. All right, problem number two is going to be using a radical equation. So these are uh, times that we see radical equations showing up, and one of those is when we're determining the time in seconds when a pendulum is swinging. So you guys worked with pendulums in science class a couple weeks back. So our first question says the time t in seconds it takes for a pendulum of a clock to complete a full swing is approximated by the equation t is equal to 2 times the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by 3.3. And this is measuring it in feet. And we want to know how long the pendulum is uh, swinging if it is, or how long the pendulum is if the swing is one second. So we're solving for L. We know our time, we know T, so we're going to substitute one for T. So one is equal to two times the square root of L over 3.3. So what do we do to get, rid, get the uh, radical by itself? Well, we need to divide everything by 2, get that 2 out uh, away from in front. So 1 half is equal to the square root of L divided by 3.3. So we need to square both sides of the equation. And we get 1 fourth is equal to L over 3.3. And if we want to get L by itself, we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 3.3. So 1 fourth times 3.3 gives us 
eight to five meters. Meters? Not meters. Seconds. 8.825. No, the length. How long? Length is in feet. I'm sorry. It is in feet, not meters. 0.825 feet. 0.825 feet. I was going to say, an eight foot pendulum is awfully large. Right. It's a little under a feet. A little under <laughs> a foot. A feet. All right, letter B, the time in T, or time T in seconds, it takes for an object to fall H feet. No air resistance can be found using the equation T is equal to the square root of H over four. From what height was an object dropped if it takes two and a half seconds to reach the ground? So we are trying to find the height or H, and we know that it takes 2.5 seconds, so we plug that in for T, and that is equal to the square root of H over four. We need to get rid of that 4, so we multiply both sides of the equation by 4. And we get uh, 10 is equal to the square root of h. And we want to square both sides of the equation to get rid of the radical. So 100 is equal to h, and our unit is feet. So make sure you have the unit on there, 100 feet. All right. Letter C, the velocity of a projectile is determined by the function V is equal to S divided by the or square root of S over 0.03, where S is the horizontal distance that the projectile traveled. If the velocity is measured at 150 meters per second, we want to know what distance it travels. So velocity, 150, S over 0.03. So is there anything we can do outside the radical? No, we just need to start off by squaring it. So 150 squared is 22,500. And that is equal to S over 0 .3, 0 0.03. Now we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 0 0.03. And we're going to get that the horizontal distance is 675 meters. We're using metric units for this one. Okay. Problem three. Solving with radical expressions on both sides. Yay. So the first thing we need to do for these is square both sides of the equation. And that's going to take care of all those messy radicals. And we are left with 7x minus 4 is equal to 5x plus 10. Hey, this looks an awful lot like chapter 2. So we subtract 5x from both sides of the equation. We're moving our variables over to the left. where We have 2x minus 4 is equal to 10. Add 4 to both sides. 2x is equal to 14 divided by 2. x equals 7. Nice and easy. All right, letter B, start off, square both sides of the equation. We're left with 3m minus 6 is equal to m plus 23. Take away an m from both sides. 2m minus 6 is equal to 23. Add 6 to both sides. 2m equals 29. Divide by 2. M is equal to 14.5. Or you could leave it as just 29 halves. We will not be picky. Letter C, square both sides of the equation. Now for this one, make sure you are squaring everything. So we got R plus 5 is equal to 4 times the quantity R minus 1. Now we need to use distributive property. R plus 5 is equal to 4R minus 4. Subtract an R from both sides. 5 is equal to 3R minus 4. Add 4 to both sides. 
9 is equal to 3r, divide by 3, and we get, divide by 3, r is equal to 3. That's what I meant. All right. Uh, letter D, square both sides of the equation. We get 3x plus 3 is equal to x minus 7. Subtract x from both sides. 2x plus 3 is equal to negative 7. Add 3 to both sides. Subtract 3, to, subtract 3 from both sides because it's 2x plus 3. Kind of high maintenance today, Mr. Bolin. That's all right. So 2x equals negative 10. Divide both sides by 2. And x is equal to negative 5. And that'll be the end of the lesson for today. Have a great night. We'll see you all in class.